Now your patient says your favorite question, where do you get your, your protein? Um, and let's take a minute and understand that too. Uh, there's a condition that we diagnose called protein anxiety. The patient has never had a protein deficiency, but is worried about getting enough protein, is not quite sure what protein is. So um, the protein requirements, the recommended daily allowance, if we're looking in pounds, uh, it's about 0 0.4 grams of protein per pound of your body weight. Uh, if you're thinking metric, it's about 0 0.8 grams per kilogram. So for a woman, call it 46 grams a day. For a man, maybe 56. There's a margin for error. Um, most people would get by perfectly fine on less than that, but that's, what, that, that's a good recommendation. So if you're not eating meat or you're in encouraging the patient to get away from it, are they going to get protein? Well, the amazing thing is a lot of foods have protein. Let's say I eat a 2,000 calorie diet and all I ate tomorrow was broccoli. That was all I ate. I would get 146 grams of protein. If all I ate the next day was lentils, in 2,000 calories, I'm getting 157 grams of protein. If all I ate was corn or all I ate was oatmeal, I'd still get a lot of protein. Even if all I had was mashed potatoes and, there wasn't, and I threw the skin away, you still get a surprising amount of protein. Now, I'm not recommending that you do this, and I can hear you screaming, wait a minute, there's something about essential amino acids. Isn't that, there's, a, there's an issue there. Um, and you remember this list from medical school, the essential amino acids? You are lying. <laughs> you don't remember this list. And there's a reason you don't remember this list. It's you have never seen a case of threonine deficiency. You haven't seen it. Nobody came in really low on valine. And the reason is the essential amino acids are found in plant foods too. And normally we always ask for, a, we always look for a variety of these things. Your patients are not going to become protein deficient. It just doesn't happen. And the AND uh, came out, came and weighed in on this and said, vegetarian, including vegan diets, typically meet or exceed protein intakes as long as you're eating food, as long as you're eating enough calories. And that's also true for athletes. So athletes need more protein. They do, but depending on what you're doing. So what do they do? They eat more food and protein comes along with it. So the old notion that I grew up with in Fargo, North Dakota was your protein foods, meat has protein, but the vegetables, other things don't have protein at all. The thing to get across to your patients is other foods have protein, vegetables have protein. Beans have protein, grains have protein. If you took the meat off the plate, they're still gonna get adequate protein, as long as they're getting adequate calories. So, what is this? What, what is this? This is air. So where do you get your oxygen? Um, if you take a sample of air, it's about 21% oxygen. The rest is nitrogen. And now, if, can I get enough oxygen from breathing? Um, what if I'm an athlete? Um, if you're an athlete, you breathe more. So protein is a little bit like oxygen. There's some of it in the foods that you eat. And you're, you're not going to become protein deficient unless you're eating nothing but candy all day. And then you've got lots of other problems, okay?